Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, thank you for sparing your time during the summit uh, to be present and have a little quick discussion on a few issues that are very relevant to this area. Uh, first of all, welcome to this short discussion. And uh, my first question will be, Sheikh, to you, al Muskere, that um, I believe uh, this is your second time you've attended the Horasis meet. I believe the first one was at uh, Cyprus, which was the Russia meet. And I see you again at the Arab meet here at this time. So uh, the, the normal question that comes to my mind is, what is it that draws you towards Horasis, a summit of this kind that brings uh, policy, business leaders, uh, nonprofits, all of them together? So if you could just uh, give me your perspective. Okay, let me, I'll give you a very brief of my background as a diplomat. And I always work on the multilateral. So I believe this uh, collective thinking. And this panel has given us a collective, collective thinking, which thrown ideas being thrown to the public, and everybody grab what he wants out of these ideas. But uh, the most important, interest, most interesting things in this kind of uh, uh, gathering is the context, context. knowing people. Uh, since uh, last uh, April, which the uh, Cyprus, Cyprus when the Cyprus happened, yes. We had a lot of context, uh, so and we continue. So here, the, some people who have been there, we follow up what we have discussed earlier and what we communicated during the by email. So it's very interesting uh, panels and uh, forum to discuss and exchange ideas and also open mind of the to have the open mind for the countries and interaction to each. Countries. Super. So that means I hope to uh, see you in the forthcoming many Horasis events, both in the Arab world as well as the one uh, in Europe as well as... Uh, Actually now, uh, I don't want to uh, announce it officially, but uh, we are in the uh, talk with uh, Dr. Richter, uh, Yogi, Frank Richter. Uh, we may conduct one conference every year in Moscow. Oh, that's wonderful. So that's so that will. That's great. It's unofficially yet. Yeah. Well, that's, that's great, and I think that will uh, further give more impetus to this movement that we're talking about. Uh, Rajiv, yes. you know this area very well. Very well. So I'm very tempted to ask you one question about, uh, you know, the collaborative opportunity for manufacturing sector between the Arab world and India. I mean, I know people have been talking about services quite a bit, but... Uh, what is your thinking in terms of an opportunity or not for a manufacturing collaboration between the Arab world and Indian subcontinent? There is tremendous opportunity as a, being an IMA president, we come across so many global leaders and it was, uh, it is my first meeting in Harasas here in Arab world on the subject is also very interesting. Arab has a lot of potential. They have created one of the world's strongest brand called Emirates. Mm -hmm. uh, you see manufacturing units in uh, Arab world. 80-90% of the labor is from India. Now, I want Arab to look at the investment in India. Basically, what we get FDIs or FIA investment in India is normally from European countries or from USA. But Arab countries have a lot of money and they can look for uh, their investment in that uh, Indian industry basically and they can I invest in India that's one way from our upside and second way technology yes we do have a technology we have a young population we have a good intelligent well studied boys managers from uh, India I being a head of all India management association we have excellent managers who can manage crisis, who can manage any situation of a business and it could be a great asset to the Arab world basically. And Arab will be very well equipped with infrastructure, energy and power and water and everything. So Arab has everything basically. In fact, you took the question out of my mouth. I was going to ask this that how come we see much lesser or no amounts of FDI in India from the Arab world. And uh, I think that will further this partnership uh, very quick question on the side. What is the uh, tariff uh, agreement between uh, GCC and India? Is there any uh, is there any concessional tariff or is there an agreement there, that is there, up? There is no uh, 
common tariffs no common. to the GCC. Okay. But maybe there are some uh, bilateral bilateral trade bilateral tariffs trade. because that will so further what help. I want to add on what yeah. Rajesh said. Yeah. The relation between India and uh, this area, it's not uh, uh, today. Oh, it's, it's about 5,000 years ago. Centuries ago. ago. Years ago. True. At least True. Really culturally, culturally, even the stomach, we, uh, we have the same food. That's <laughs> correct. That's correct. That's very conducive. Yeah, yeah it is. No, this we have a lot of common culture. We have a, a geographical area. What we think uh, the important thing, there's a tool from both sides we have to look at and uh, what to take mm. action. <coughs> from Indian side, I believe that this is the future of the world economy. And this is not to me, it is uh, what is uh, statistics say, that the future is India and China. And India for us is the neighboring country. So, but what we need from India, we don't know India, except from the experts coming, okay, and uh, labor uh, exporting. But still, from the part of the investment, Okay. Still, we are not aware. While we look at the most of the Western countries are coming to India to invest. Okay. So it is what I request the Indian authority, company, investment opportunity to have a kind of a, a panel or forum to invite uh, investment from this region. And today, I will advise uh, the other side. I will advise the the Arab countries okay, to, to, come, to go to India today uh, a more profitable, much cheaper than tomorrow. Yeah. Fantastic. Because still opportunities are very high, a potential uh, we have. General, I have a question for you, Sudhir Sharma. Yeah, uh, I know you, are, you have a defense background, but your <laughs> passion for technology, uh, yes. uh, entrepreneurship, leadership is so unparalleled that uh, what do you think? You know, this is a sunny area. This is an area which needs more energy. What is it that you think are specific opportunities of certain industrial segments that you think we can collaborate to further bilateral trade and become the hub for that in this part of the world? Well, uh, like you said, that uh, energy security is another very big imperative of the region. While the Arab world may be energy surplus currently, but it's a finite resource. And like you said, this is the most sunniest part of the world. And if you can harness some of the energies, they got the sea, they got the sun, solar power, and India, China, the developing economy they got, they are energy hungry. And this can become one of a hub to feed the energy resources into our countries because there's going to be a lot of shortage of it. And I see that talent being developed. And with what Rajiv said, if technology and this can be harnessed together in this region, they create the jobs and the safety. and we require the energy and that can be really done together with taking the technology. In fact, I had another linked question that we talked about technology, asking to Sheikh Saab. Yesterday and today, if you remember, the Highness and everybody is talking about innovation and technology as the drivers of growth for the Arab region. My thinking process was, and Rajiv also can come into it, that imported technology to generate job is one part of it. When is it the possibility of the Arab world building their own roots for technology where it can grow indigenously and then it can you know grow slowly yeah. so that the growth becomes more consistent rather than you know cyclic. Is it possible that that will take place over a period of time? No, because not only that, this morning I mentioned the, the role of the, if we have uh, both sides, Indian subcontinent, uh, technology and know-how with the Arab uh, liquidity to go together outside of the region, like Africa. Africa is one of the areas in everything. So why don't we think, okay, I mean, practically, let's uh, share, I mean, uh, join hands and go to this continent instead of leaving it to others. That's a very valid point. In fact, I just want to add one more line because I think uh, culturally and historically, uh, uh, India and this region have been working very closely. True. People respect each other. True. Uh, they trust each other. And I think that synergy can f be furthered uh, using technology, innovation, yes. these new segments of investments, innovation. And I think something 
absolutely fresh and long can be built from here. Uh, I think we, sh we should all take this message back to wherever we come from. Yeah. A chamber of commerce, uh, bilateral, cultural, <coughs> and, and, and take the message that we, we ha it's a win-win for everyone. But I trust, I trust more private sector should lead this. I believe so. That's a good yeah. point. And it's and a private sector. Perfect. I mean, can be the platform for uh, all parties. Absolutely. Okay. So thank you very much for, for being here. And uh, you have a safe flight back from wherever you came. And good, uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you, David. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody.